Welcome into the video. I am your tech guide, Wayne. And today I wanna to go over how to use the new Fitbit Charge 6 for beginners. This will be a full walkthrough. So I'm gonna start from the basics. You take it out of the box. We're gonna show you how to pair it to your phone, how to link it with the app. And then we'll show you how to navigate the screen and also how to then navigate the app, how to turn on your app notifications and how to change the clock face. So the goal is to really get you caught up so you get the basics of what you need to do to set it up and how to use the device. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important nuggets. Let's go ahead and jump right in. You wanna plug in your charger to a USB port and simply connect to the back of your uh, device. Match up the magnetic strips. Give it a few seconds, it's gonna turn on the Fitbit and it's gonna send a pulse notification all right, and here's our pop-up right here. So we're gonna hit the setup uh, button. And basically that just takes you right to the Play Store so you can download the app. Um, you don't need to wait for that pop-up. You can simply go to the Play Store and you can just download uh, the Fitbit app. Um, it's up to you. Uh, but if you wait a few seconds, it should show up on your screen. Now while the app is downloading here, I wanna give a quick plug to my shopping cart right here. You'll see a little shopping cart icon and if you tap on that uh, little button, it'll show you a list of cool accessories that go with this Fitbit. So for example, uh, extra charging cable, uh, charging cradle, uh, and screen protectors and different bands. So definitely check out that little shopping cart there and uh, see if you find the other cool things to go with your Fitbit. I love to use a charging cradle with mine just because it makes it easier at night when you take it off to just uh, dock it right on that cradle and have it charge for you. All right, the app is now downloaded. And so now we need to go ahead and sign in. I'm gonna sign up for the first time by simply hitting sign in with Google. I'm gonna hit continue. And this will allow me to basically set up my Fitbit account. Now, if you already have an account, you can simply tap on sign in with the existing Fitbit account. If you don't, no problem, just hit continue as a new user. And that way you can set up your profile. Obviously it'll ask you to accept some terms and conditions, which you'll need to do. All right, so we fill out a few pieces of information here. And it will ask you if you wanna get email notifications, which is up to you. I'm gonna turn these off. Now in the next step, this is when it will begin to link with your Fitbit device. So here we're gonna hit setup. We'll need to uh, enable a few permissions. Hit I agree. Next, tap on location permission. You'll hit while using the app, you'll turn on the background location permissions. Go up to all the time, hit done. It's found our Fitbit, and now we wanna just input the numbers we see on the screen, which is the 0654. All right, next we're gonna hit OK. And we're gonna tap on Pair and Connect. Pair. Let's skip this for now. This is when you would actually put on your Fitbit. And so they'll give you a quick little tour of the device, we're gonna do this in the next step, but this is a great little visual to watch. It kind of shows you how to navigate the screen, how you can swipe left and right to navigate through the different uh, faces. You wanna swipe right to go back, and then you can uh, tap three times in order to zoom into the screen to see the details better. And some instructions on how to clean your device and uh, how to take care of it properly. And that's it, we're all set up. There's always a plug for the Fitbit Premium membership. Um, they do give you uh, six months for free. So you can choose to try out this new service. It has access to workouts and a bunch of other additional health features. I'm gonna skip that for now just by hitting the X in the corner. The last thing is we're gonna set our notifications. I'm just gonna set permissions and turn on allow. And now we are on the main screen of the Fitbit app. Now I'm gonna slide the phone away for now and we're gonna to move to the Fitbit and we're just going to take a quick tour of the device. This is a button you can press to wake up the screen. You can also um, tap the screen twice as well to wake up the Fitbit too. So let's start on our main screen. If I just simply press the button once, 
it'll take us back to our main screen. Now I have a special watch face on it, and so um, that's how mine looks. Yours will look a little different out of the box, but no problem. I'll show you how to change that in the next step of the video. So what you'll need to know in terms of navigating is simply just swiping left here. You can swipe left or right, and it'll just roll through. Now these are all the different pages, clock face, notifications. So once we set notifications, you can get text messages. You can see if calls have come through, if you have a missed call. You can see emails, you can customize all that. You can trigger an exercise just by going here and swiping up. You can set your alarm clocks right on screen here, just by tapping and then swiping up, starting with the hour and then the minute. So let's say 10, and then I hit 18, and then at PM or AM. And that easy, you can set a alarm for yourself. And there's a little switch underneath that you can use to toggle it on and off. And you can simply tap on that alarm to go ahead and change it too. Now, if I want to get out of this screen, I can either press the button on the side to go out, and that button is gonna take me right to the home screen. Let's go back to it one more time, tap on the alarm, or I can swipe from the left side in, just like this. So again, I'm just gonna enter back in, and let's say I'm you know, making adjustments. If I wanna get out, I'm gonna start from the left side and just swipe into the middle of the screen like this, and that's gonna swipe it away and take me back to the main screen, okay? Left, swiping into the middle, all right? You can also, again, press this button to take you back to the home screen. Now let's swipe over. We have our countdown. We can set a quick timer. We have our EDA scan, our uh, ECG scan, and you can have your Google Map direction show up right on the screen. You'll essentially trigger it on the phone, and then the directions will show up on the screen. Specifically works for if you're walking somewhere, that's when It'll give you that pop-up, and I believe you can have it work with uh, car directions as well. Swipe over. This is for your Google, uh, excuse me, YouTube Music. So uh, you'll download the YouTube Music app. You can control it right from here. You can start your music, and you can uh, make adjustments like to changing the track or pausing it right from your Fitbit. And now we're back to our home screen. Now if I swipe up, it's going to take us to our Fitbit view. It'll show us our stats for the day, a quick snapshot. And as I swipe up, it'll show us our hourly activity, our heart rate, our BPM, beats per minute, our sleep tracker, our S SPO2, and our exercise tracker. Now, if I start from the side and swipe to the middle, that's our little kind of back gesture that takes us back to the home screen. Now, if I swipe down, this will take us to Google Wallet. Do not disturb mode, which will turn off the notifications. Our sleep mode, which will also disable notifications. We have our screen wake. What is screen wake? It's every time you turn your wrist, it'll show the time. If you don't want it to show the time when you turn your wrist, you'll need to turn this off. So if it shows as manual, it means that the twist to wake is turned off. But if I press it again, you want it to go back to auto. That's when it will wake up every time you turn your wrist. You can ping your phone by tapping the find phone button, which is pretty cool. There's a water lock feature when you take a shower or when you're in like a pool. If you turn this on, it will disable the touchscreen so that it won't vibrate and it won't basically be uh, overly sensitive to water. And then you also have your settings option here. By tapping on settings, you can access a ton of different features. Scroll through here to kind of see all of the different things you can do, but this is how you get to all your uh, device settings. So let's go back to our main screen. Again, I'm on the home screen. If I want to go to settings, I'm going to swipe down and swipe, swipe, swipe until I get to the settings. All right. So uh, in a nutshell, that is the process to navigate your Fitbit. And it's, it's just, there's not much to it. It's just left and right and up and down, okay? So in the next section, we're gonna jump over to the phone. Let's talk about how to navigate the Fitbit app and specific settings you'll wanna take a look at to set up your profile. 
So first in the upper left corner, you'll want to tap on the percentage. This will take you to your devices and we're going to tap on our charge six. This will take us to basically the main menu where you'll make a lot of the big changes for your device. So we're going to start with swipe up. Here you'll find some general settings that you'll, uh, you may want to take a look at to make some adjustments, starting with what is your step goal for the day? And do you want your main goal to track steps, distance, calories, or active minutes? Do you want to change the wrist that you have your Fitbit on? Make sure you adjust that here. If you go to notifications here, you'll want to make sure you assign the appropriate apps to send notifications. For example, you might have multiple text messaging apps. You might have like a WhatsApp. You may have Facebook Messenger. You can come in here and you can basically assign it. Hey, I just want text messages coming from the text message app, not from those other apps. Um, same thing with emails. You can say, hey, do you want to get email notifications? Now, uh, for myself, I normally turn off emails because I have so many different emails synced to my phone and my wrist would just ping all day. So I personally don't use the email notifications. But if you don't get too many email notifications, then no problem. I will tell you, just go ahead and keep it on. Okay, next, app notifications. So this is one of the biggest ones right here. You'll want to go through and customize specifically what apps you want allowed to send notifications. Because if not, every single app in your phone that, that pings your phone is going to ping your wrist. And it can be really frustrating after a while. Okay. Now, another thing you'll want to take a look at is the quick replies. Now, if you get a phone call, you can answer the call from your wrist, but you can't talk to your wrist. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if you decline a phone call, for example, you can actually have some default messages that will appear. And same thing, if you get a text message, you can actually change these default messages simply by just tapping in the box and just type something different, you know, um, busy call later or busy, what's up? You know, whatever you want that to be, you have five different slots that you can customize. And uh, when you, you know, again, a, a text comes through, you can simply uh, default to one of those replies. Same thing if you decline a call, you can default to one of these replies as well. You can also have five default emojis. Maybe you don't want this one, you can just simply tap on it and just pick a different emoji you know, instead of the one that's there. So that's just a, a cool thing I would tell you customize because it allows you to do more just with your Fitbit. Okay, now let's um, go back one more screen here. So those are some of the general uh, adjustments that I normally make. Now next, you'll wanna go to the gallery. The gallery is actually where you change the face that's on your Fitbit, okay? You're gonna tap here and it's going to give you, you know, basically all the different clock faces that are available along with the apps. So at the very top here, you'll see there's a clocks button and there's an apps button. I'm going to tap on clocks. And here I have all these different uh, watch faces I can switch to. Let's say we want to do, let's pick a uh, just a really simple one. This one right here. I think this is one of the stock faces. This is probably the one you already have on yours now that I think about it. I'm just going to hit install. And it's going to take, you know, usually a couple of seconds for it to sync. And then that will appear on the face. So, so this is what you'll see that will tell you that it's in process of switching over to that new clock face. The one thing to pay attention to is if you can see um, right at the bottom of the big clock, you see all these little numbers that are flashing. What they're trying to show you is... Um, the different data that's available on the clock face. So we're all switched over. So every time I tap the screen, it's going to change the data at the bottom. So right now it's going to show steps. Tap the screen again. It's going to show my calories burnt. Tap it again. It's going to show my active minutes. So just by tapping on the clock, that's how you cycle through this data. Maybe just want to see the date. So and it'll show the battery percentage as well. So those are a few different things to look out for. So just that, that little flashing number at the bottom there. Uh, the other clock faces will do the same thing. They will show you what other data is available with that clock. So there are is a good selection, and I love that they keep adding more. So you tap on any one, and then that's how you 
um, you know, make the change. Now, another cool thing to pay attention to is if I tap on a clock face and I swipe up, it'll show you all the different colors that are available too. So, you know, you can make these adjustments. Maybe you don't like the orange, but you like it in the red or the or uh, this different orange. You can uh, make that change to it as well. All right. So that's how you change the clock faces. Now, if you go all the way to the right to apps, you can see the different apps that are available. And these are all already installed on the device. So if you were to go in, the, the main thing you can do here is just... Um, you can delete it if there's an app that you don't use. So for example, I never really used the SPO2 function. Now I wouldn't necessarily delete it because maybe one day I will want to use it, but you might say, you know, it just makes my screen busy and I don't want extra things on there. No problem. In that case, you can come in here and just uninstall it. So um, you would just tap the uninstall button right there. There's also, let's see, let's go back one here. You can tap on customize clock face. And this is how you can change the color of the main face. And you can also come in and make adjustments about what shows uh, on the main screen. And that's pretty much it in terms of the clock faces and the apps. Again, with this Fitbit, there's a limited amount of apps and a limited amount of clock faces. So uh, there's not really much to that. And here, another thing we'll pay attention to is our Google Wallet. Now to use Google Wallet, you will need to set up a screen lock password. So we're gonna just tap set up now. And here you can decide what method you'd like to use, um, whether it is a, a pattern, you know, using your, using your face unlock or fingerprint unlock. You can select any one of these three different options. I'm gonna just select pin, and I'm gonna just set one, two, three, four as the pin. There we go. Hit done. Okay, so now we're all set. So basically it needs to set up Google Wallet on your phone first, and then that's what is going to link with your watch. So now that we've set up our password on our phone and we've set up our Google Wallet on the phone, now we can set our pin on the watch. So we're gonna tap set pin. I'm going to make it the same thing just as a default one, two, three, four. And next you would enter a credit card to your file. And then when you go to use the Fitbit to pay at a location, you would need to imp input that four digit code in order to be able to use your Google wallet. So that's the main thing you'll need to set up. I would encourage you to do that because you never know when you're going to forget your wallet at home and to have you know a credit card linked with your Fitbit might save you in a pinch if you need to buy something. The cool thing is Google Wallet really is available almost anywhere now. If you see that little tap logo on the credit card reader, it means that it should work with your Fitbit. So make sure you get that set up. And you know what? That brings us to the end of the video. Those are the main things that I would tell you to set up when you're first using your Fitbit. And ultimately the goal of this video again was just to educate you on how to set your device up, specific settings to take a look at, and hopefully give you a basic understanding of how this cool new Fitbit works. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if this video was helpful. Also let me know if there were other things that maybe you wanted me to go over that I didn't cover. And if enough people comment, I'll put together a part two of this video. Um, if you found value in this video, if you could do me a favor and hit that like button down below, I appreciate it. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.